our law. Tonight we have this special order and we have several members that are going to speak on this. Um, the first one is Representative Wagner. She served in the House in 2013 and she has herself worked extensively on human trafficking issues. Uh, she is a co-sponsor of the SHAME Act that I've sponsored and we've worked together uh, and I am uh, honored to introduce her as our first speaker on this very important issue of the human trafficking for after two years the legislation being signed. And so I will yield to the lady as much time as she wishes to use. I thank the gentleman very, very much. Um, and I thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to co-lead this uh, special order with my dear colleague, Congressman uh, Ted Poe, uh, for Human Trafficking Week. I was thrilled, Mr. Speaker, that yesterday the House passed my legislation, the Put Trafficking Victims First Act. Together, we can get victims of trafficking out of dangerous and abusive situations and create better, more accessible, trauma-informed services. Victims don't just need to be rescued. They need opportunities to rebuild and sort through trauma and to live well. My bill advances a survivor-centered approach to addressing human trafficking that ensures the safety, confidentiality, and the well-being of victims. It encourages stakeholders to recognize symptoms of trauma and coping mechanisms that may impact victims' interactions with law enforcement, the justice system, and service providers. One of the key ways we can address the upsetting realities of human trafficking in the U.S. justice system is by giving victims a pathway to vacate and expunge their criminal records for offenses that they were forced to commit. I have met with many survivors in my home state of Missouri and across our great country who struggle to rebuild their lives because they are trailed by criminal records. Traffickers and pimps intentionally push victims to commit crimes at, as a means of control. My heart breaks for these women who have suffered horrendous abuse and bear the mark of a record on top of it. Criminal records make it difficult for survivors to get jobs, medical care, education, and even housing assistance. These records haunt survivors and can even lead to re-victimization. Mr. Speaker, if we are serious about giving survivors of trafficking a second chance, we must enact serious foolproof vacator laws that erase the collateral consequences of treating trafficking victims like criminals. This is why I introduced, along with the support of many of my colleagues, the Trafficking Survivors Relief Act. This bill would give victims of trafficking relief from federal or D.C. criminal convictions or arrests. We know well that federal courts are not, and I underscore not, infallible, and that many victims are trafficked within the district. These women don't deserve criminal records. They deserve restitution, civil damages, and the empowerment to walk with their heads held high. I am adamant that these women get a second chance at life that they find housing and therapy and jobs and new friends, new chances. I am adamant that the United States of America will no longer punish people for trauma that, must, that, must of us, uh, that most of us cannot even imagine. And I am adamant that the United States Congress will have the moral aptitude to enact the Trafficking Survivors Relief Act. And I am adamant that not one more victim of trafficking will be mistreated in our criminal justice system. And Mr. Speaker, I am adamant that we pass this bill into law. I thank you and I thank the gentleman for the time and I yield back. I thank the lady. I'd like to uh, ask a, a couple of questions if she doesn't mind. I know you have other appointments yes, this sir. evening, but I want to ask you a couple of questions. How has how has the trafficking situation in your home state of Missouri um, decreased or this legislation helped? Um, well, I will tell you that the legislation that you and I have worked on uh, for a number of years and that you have spent the better part of a lifetime uh, as a judge and as a legislator 
um, is saving lives. But sadly, my uh, hometown of St. Louis, Missouri, is, uh, would be ranked in the top 20 state, uh, counties or um, uh, cities in the nation for human trafficking. Uh, so the problem is, is prevalent. It exists still. And what breaks my ho heart most of all are those, uh, those children that have been victimized, whether it's by um, online predators or other means, uh, those that are the most vulnerable in our society. Uh, we've been able to work with many of the safe houses, um, uh, with our prosecutors, with uh, our law enforcement, with our advocacy groups. As you and I both know, uh, Congressman Poe, we can't always legislate all the ills of society away. So what I appreciate uh, about the work that we do is not only passing laws and legislation to help those victims, but also the education and awareness that is so very, very important. So anything that we can do to, to, to lift those advocates up, to bring a spotlight to this modern day slavery is so very, very important. So I commend you for your work and for the special order here tonight. And I look forward to a day when, um, when this, this heinous crime this modern-day slavery uh, no longer exists in the United States of America. I thank the lady for her comments. Also, wanted to compliment you on your your tenacious work of going after Backpage and getting the, um, that resource, making it unavailable for those traffickers and those buyers. I want to commend you for that. Well, I I, I thank the gentleman and and would uh, uh, would say that, that Mr. Speaker. Uh, these online predators are, uh, uh, are the bane of our existence. It's a dark underbelly of the human trafficking and sex slavery trade uh, that is out there. And it is absolutely unconscionable that crimes can be committed online that would not be allowed to be committed offline. And we're going to go to the heart uh, with my next piece of legislation of the Communications Decency Act that so many attorneys general and states and prosecutors and law enforcement and advocacy groups are begging for Congress to act to make sure that there is clarity so that states and the federal government can prosecute and to make sure that we um, uh, make the changes that are necessary in a very specific and narrow way to make sure that those online predators um, are not uh, victimizing uh, the children and women and young boys of our land. So I look forward to working with you and my colleagues on uh, much more work in this arena. Thank you very much. Appreciate you being here and making such a powerful comment.